Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm It's Robbie Rhino, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Centurion 5.1, which is the last British medium tank in Era 1 in the line that leads to the Challenger 2 all the way in Era 3. And I'll be having a look at this tank compared to the Centurion Mark 2, which is the tank that I looked at a few days ago and I'll tell you the differences it's a nice little upgrade and we have two gameplays for you showing you how this tank performs so let's get right into it you have a 330 hit point upgrade so you're now uh, sitting at 2050 hit points fully upgraded in this tank and you have a 15 meters view range increase so you now have 475 meters view range mobility wise it's also a nice improvement on the Centurion Mark II you have 200 horsepower more in your engine, which means that this engine has a 950 horsepower engine with a 18.61 horsepower to ton. You go 40 kilometers an hour forwards and 16 backwards, which is a six kilometers an hour upgrade on its top speed and a four kilometers an hour upgrade on its reverse speed. The turret traverse is 34 degrees a second, which is uh, two degrees a second more than the Centurion Mark II. Uh, the whole traverse is two seconds less at 36 seconds, uh, 36 degrees a second, but you can negate that with uh, the speed equipment, the, mo the mobility equipment that I'll be showing you that I use on this tank a little later on. The armor on the turret is completely the same as the Mark II. It's 254 on the front, 89 on the sides and 89 on the rear, which means that with gun depression, you're looking at about 270 millimeters of effective armor on the turret cheeks, around 235 millimeters of effective armor just around the gun and about 280 millimeters of effective armor on the top of the turret. So yeah, a very nice turret and it's a very similar play style. Get hold down. Uh, try not to let opponents have your lower plate, your upper plate and your sides and you should be golden. And the lovely or the best thing I think about this tank is the upgrade to the gun. So fully upgraded this gun gets a 105mm L7A1 gun that fires 6 rounds a minute and it has 390 alpha damage on its standard and premium rounds and 480 alpha damage on its... I believe it's Hesh rounds. Um, so the penetration for that is 268 on its standard, 300 on its premium, and 210 on its Hesh rounds, which is really, really nice. And the shell velocity is also really awesome. It's 1478 on its standard, 1448 meters a second on its premium, and 735 on its Hesh rounds. Uh, base reload, fully upgraded, is 10 second reload with a 2.1 second aim time. 0.29 meters accuracy which is fantastic when it's base carry 70 rounds and you have the 10 degrees of gun depression and 18 degrees of elevation that the centurion mark ii gets as well and the dpm on this gun is less than centurion mark ii but it i think it's made up for by the higher alpha the higher pen and the better gun handling it's sitting at 2340 damage per minute Equipment wise, I run advanced loader, gun stabilizer, and I also use a traction system. Because this mobility is even better than the Mark II, I want to improve that even more to keep up with every single tank, or try to keep up as best I can with every single tank in Era 1. So I run that traction system. Commander wise, I run Sixth Sense, Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Steady Aim, Rapid Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun situational awareness and armor angling and as I mentioned in my video on Centurion Mark II I run armor angling because I'm going to be wanting to use that in the heavies later down the line in this uh, in this line so with all of my commander and my equipment set up I'll just tell you some of the improvements that those uh, that the equipment and the commander skills give me and I have a view range of 528 meters I have a DPM now of 3014 my gun now has a 2 second aim time and a 0.28 accuracy which is really really nice, it shoots like, like a bit of a laser pointer and my mobility now is even better so I go 44 kilometers an hour forwards, 
18 kilometers an hour backwards. I have a turret traverse of 39 degrees a second and a hold traverse of 40 degrees a second. So it's extremely mobile compared to the Centurion Mark II. And overall, I think this is a really, really nice upgrade. So play the same play style. You go hold down, use this fantastic gun, and you don't have to expose yourself quite as much as you do in the Centurion Mark II because you have that lower DPM but higher alpha damage. So that brings us to the end of the first replay where we have a nice game, picking up 3 kills, finishing MVP, 4.8k direct damage, 1.2k assistance damage and 1524 assistance. We make some nice silver, I think using a silver booster there. So that's it for the first replay, we'll hop into the second replay and I'll talk you through how I get on and what I do with this tank in that replay. So see you in a bit. So we're now into the second replay of the video and we're here on Vineyards and you're going to see me go at the start of this battle to a position that you see me use in light tanks. I'm going to go to the ridge line that runs across, I think it's the, it's the E line, D line, just about that. I think it's in between the E and D line and I'm going to use that position to try and spot out people crossing in the north of this map at the start of the battle trying to get some assistance and get some lovely cross shots at the start of this battle and I feel confident that my turret will bounce at least more than 50-60% of the shots that I take to it especially at this range and I'm going to see yeah, how, uh, how much damage I can get at the start and I can always try and relocate after speaking about that turret I managed to turn it and you get a shot into the side which is the risk you do take when you come to a position like this that's in the open uh, you do have to try and keep your turret pointed to where you feel like the shots are going to come in from but you know with the 2050 hit points i feel like this position will be worthwhile uh, in the end i haven't spotted too many tanks at the start but there's plenty of opportunities coming up now i'm going to aim for a shot into this other centurion 5-1 get a lovely shot into the cupola there and that just proves how good this accuracy is you uh you don't have to lead too much with the lovely uh, shell velocity and yeah it's it's really accurate sort of very nice british gun um yeah and i'm really enjoying this tank it feels like a nice solid upgrade from the centurion mark ii the mobility helps an awful lot um, and because of that mobility increase and the fact that i'm using the traction system i feel like this tank you know it can do without that fantastic dpm that centurion mark ii has um so as you can see i didn't use this the, the traction system and the mobility equipment in the centurion mark ii because i felt like i just wanted to improve what's really really good about that tank and that was the dpm i didn't feel like i could get the mobility as good as i do in this tank so i might as well have made the dpm as good as i could and tried to play the tank in a slightly different play style just exposing myself slightly more and using the DPM. Whereas in this one, you can pop up, get a shot in, get back down and sort of re-stealth, relocate. And you don't feel like you're sort of sitting in front of your opponents too often. As you can see here, I'm just trying to keep moving on this ridge line, trying to evade the shots. Uh, I have uh, I have bounced 400 damage, but I have taken quite a few shots. And that's a lot of that's come in from people that are shooting down on either onto my hull or they've got shots into the side of my turret which is going to happen but I'm still on a thousand hit points and as you'll see this game turns into a, a pretty nice game and yeah I, I like to play aggressively um, I feel like I play more aggressively in Cold War because of the sort of faster nature and the, the more hit points and um, yeah the, the higher DPM usually um, especially when you get to Eras 2 and 3 and I've, I've kind of uh, I've made the mistake of carrying that over into World War 2 a little bit if I'm playing both modes in one gaming session um, but now I'm going to just move up on this ridge line and see if I can get shots at the people that were shooting me at the beginning of this battle that like to sit in that little castle area. This is a great location to get shots through these like trees, through the foliage, into people that are going to be camping that little sort of ridge line on the on that area up there. We get a nice shot using the True Vision system into the T44A crossing over that gap. And we're just going to see what we can do here for the moment, see if we get any shots and if we don't get any assistance or shots um, for a while we will move up but we're still getting some shots every now and again um, not every time we're loaded but I feel like it's it's not necessarily the best time to move just yet um, I'm hoping that these tanks to the right of me sort of try and cross towards the north or try and retreat down the one and two lines um, 
towards where sort of my mediums are because they're going to be surrounded in a minute and when they start to get surrounded by my friendlies then that gives me the chance to move in um, and use that distraction as a bit of a opportunity to move up through the ridge lines but as you can see just from using this position we've picked up you know nearly 5k combined already and they're still you know it's still a very close game we're, we're ahead by one tank and yeah we're just going to try and push out and see what what damage we can get out of this tank and I think these tanks have proved to be a really good indicator having uh, you know from what I've seen of other people's replays of the Challenger 1 and 2 and the tanks you know in era 2 and 3 in this line that it's a very similar kind of play style you're not as fast as other tanks but you will be uh, you know better than them in a lot of regards to your gun handling and maybe to your DPM your turret armor and this is like a hold down slower but you know very solid line and i'm looking very much forward look, looking forward to um getting the challenger one and two uh when i get there but yeah i'm having silver issues at the moment because i'm trying to grind cold war and world war two at the same time and it it all gets a bit expensive so we're going to use uh <laughs> this centurion 5 one that's battling that t44a to try and take him out but unfortunately we miss he does get taken out by our friendly t95 e3 and as you can see there, the reload with my uh, combat rations enhanced is about 7 seconds for 390 health damage, which is quite nice. That's kind of comparable to the T-95E3, the, the Aero and Premium tank for the Western Alliance, the American Medium tank. And that's, you know, one of the best tanks, if not the best in Aero 1 in terms of Medium tanks. And it's a very similar playstyle to that. You have good turret armor, a really, really nice gun, and this has better gun handling, so... If you're looking for comparisons, I'd say that's that's quite a good comparison there. So we haven't had a shot for a while. We're just going to see the last few seconds, and then we're going to think about moving on and pushing up, trying to sort of extend our damage out. But I don't want to push too too hard and too fast right at the moment because this is a close game and because I only have 1,000 hit points left. We get a nice shot into that Centurion there, into the rear of his tank. We're going to get another one on the move here, I believe. There we are. Now we're going to advance. He's a one shot. We use that rocket's cover as we're advancing, and that's how I try and advance in the tank like this. Try and use ridge lines and hard cover to advance to your opponent so that you minimize the risk of getting shot. I'm going to use these buildings just to scoop through, and I'm going to try and get the tanks that I'm hoping are coming from the north of their spawn. They're going to be coming this way, trying to run away from, from us, but they're going to be running into our friendlies, and we've got them surrounded now, and this looks like it's game over for them. So we're going to push up here to this little bit, which is where tanks like to sit to snipe, both in World War II and Cold War. This is a very sort of campy location, a very popular location. And you also get shots here, up here, as you can see, onto this uh, train track in this little bridge area. We get a nice shot through the side of the M48 P1's turret, which is a very strong turret. This is very nice penetration, especially, as you can see, I think I'm using my premium rounds at the moment. I'm not sure when I switched or why. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter too much, just lose a tiny little bit of silver, but you still make it overall because of the silver earn rates in Cold War. So there's only two tanks left on the enemy team, and I'm just going to go forward. I've got the hit points to take at least, you know, three to four shots. I'm going to come around the back of this Centurion 2 and get the final shell into him. Pick it up and give a kill. And yeah, we finish with another really nice game. And these are the kind of average games I've been having in this tank. And that it's really capable. And this tank will be capable of a heck of a lot more. As you can see, that's only a second class. But we pick up 5.2k direct damage, 2.5k assistance, 4 kills, make 150,000 silver. And yeah, it's a really nice tank. I highly recommend this tank. It's very much worth it when it's fully upgraded. The mobility and the gun handling and performance in the higher alpha makes it worth it. And yeah, I'll be doing a review on the Centurion 9 very shortly, which is the first tank in Era 2 in this line. Um, that should be coming up just after Christmas. But for now, I hope you all have a lovely Christmas. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little mini review in comparison to the Centurion Mark II. I'll see you on the battlefield, and bye for now.